hi and welcome back to my channel today i'm here to talk to you about the rest of the books that i read in the month of june now i already did a mid-month wrap up where i had read five books in the beginning of june and i kept up with that same pace and i have another five books to talk to you about so 10 books total for june which is actually a really good month for me um i try to average about eight books a month um some months i do better some months I have less. It just kind of depends on what I have going on and whether I'm reading physical or ebooks or listening to the audiobooks. So it all just depends. But I do have five books to talk to you about today uh, that I was able to read at the end of the month here. So the very first one was a book that I did mention in my mid month wrap up. It is a Kindle Unlimited book. Here. Uh, it was a Kindle Unlimited book um, called Unmissing. I heard about it at book club and it's by Minka Kent. Uh, basically the premise is a woman goes missing on a hike and we don't know what happens to her. We know she's been captured, but we don't know what happens. And we pick up the story five years later and this woman has escaped her captor and is now trying to go back and reclaim her life. Um, when she went missing, she had a husband and they were kind of just establishing their life together. And now she goes back and realizes her husband is married. So we get the two different perspectives between the woman that went missing and the, uh, the husband's new wife. It's a really interesting story. I don't want to give too much away, but I really enjoyed kind of the back and forth um, perspectives. And there were a lot of twists that I just did not expect. So this one was for sure a five star read for me. And I highly suggest you pick it up. The next one I picked up in June was Jennifer Weiner's The Summer Place. This one kind of was a cover by kind of was an author by I like I've liked Jennifer Weiner in the past. Um, I was like, Ooh, a book about summer perfect to start reading in June. And it did have multiple perspectives, which is usually kind of a, a bell ringer for me or a, a, a hook for me. Um, but this one I found to fall short a little bit. I was really hoping to hear more about the summer aspect and this one heavily focused on the different characters lives and kind of overcoming the pandemic and how they were all stuck in the house together. Um, you get the perspectives of a woman, uh, and her husband, um, along with his daughter, so her stepdaughter, and then the woman's mother. So a lot of different perspectives, um, but all kind of fitting in the same story. And like I said, it, it was, for me, so much stuck in the past. And I think she, the author could have spent so much more time in the present timeline. Oh, and we also got um, the character's brother. So it almost felt like there was too many people to contribute and yes they all ended up kind of connecting but I was hoping for more of a summary read and this was more of a family drama which is not a bad thing it just wasn't what I was expecting and there were definitely parts that I just felt like they were dragging so I believe I gave this one three stars and that was being friendly um probably more in a two, about a two and a half for me it's just not one that I would definitely pick up again. The next book I picked up was on my Kindle again. Um, and I actually got this one through Scribed, I believe. I have a link below if you want to try it out. It gives you 60 free days. Not sponsored. Um, but this was Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. I have talked about Jennifer Hillier in a couple other videos. Uh, she's definitely an author that I've bought or looked into getting a lot from, but haven't read yet. And I know I have her newest one... I don't know, somewhere over here uh, that I want to read. And so I finally said, okay, I've heard such good things about Jar of Hearts. Let's make this one my first one that I jump into. And I am so happy I did. It was fantastic. Basically, you have a woman who we find out right away she's in prison. She was involved in a murder that happened back when she was a teenager with one of her best friends. And one of her other best friends from high school ends up being the police officer or the sheriff, I can't remember which one he is, that arrests her. And 
just very interesting connections and things that happen now in the present timeline when she's getting out of prison and the crimes start happening again. And they're worried that the guy that did go to prison for the original murder has already escaped prison and they don't know where he is. And they just assume he is striking again. So you're kind of going through all of these scenarios with them. Um, is she trustworthy? Is she not? Was she involved? Does she know where the murderer is? A lot of twists and turns. I don't want to give anything um, too much away. Highly, highly recommend it. I'm so glad this was the first Jennifer Hillier I picked up. Definite five stars for me. Uh, the next one that I picked up was The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I was able to get both the ebook and the audiobook from NetGalley to preview ahead of time. And I actually did it and I read this one before the release date. I have a video coming out soon where I kind of talk through what I have on NetGalley and I have hopes to bring my percentage up, but more on that later. But I actually really enjoyed The Bodyguard. Now this was a fake dating trope and those can be hit or miss for me. It's not always my favorite, but this one actually surprised me. There was a lot of witty banter and I loved that the main character, the female main character I should say, was The Bodyguard. Usually I think we see these roles reversed and so it was really neat to get the perspective of the female being the bodyguard and it was a male actor that needed the protection. Um, they had really, like I said, really great banter and I kind of enjoyed a few of the different things that went on in the story and there were things that I didn't expect to happen. Um, and always, you know, slightly predictable here and there, but overall the story really kept me hooked and that's the most important thing. Sometimes I find that I'm pretty judgmental when it comes to romance novels. And this one, it kept me engaged in the story and I really enjoyed it. So this one I gave a four star to. And I know some more people might have an opportunity to read it coming up because it was a book of the month choice this week or this month. So hopefully you get to enjoy that one because I did as well. Now this last book, I will be finishing today. I have 40 pages left, but I wanted to make sure I got this video filmed um, so that I could actually just go and relax and finish this one. And my fifth one is Our Last Days in Barcelona by Chanel Clayton. Um, I am really enjoying this one so far. This is Isabella Perez, Isabel Perez's story. Uh, she is the eldest of the Perez sisters and a lot of Chanel uh, Clayton's former books have focused on some of the other sisters. I actually misspoke in one of my other videos. Um, Isabel is not the last sister that we have a story from. There's actually this great map um, in the back of the book and I'll hopefully insert it in the video here um, that kind of helps lay out where all of her different um, historical fiction novels are. And so we've gotten two of her sister's perspectives but the younger sister we haven't gotten yet. So just I wanted to clear that up because I had already talked about that before. Um, but this is told through multiple timelines, which I love, um, all historical for sure. Um, but we get Isabel's perspective, we get her mother, Alicia's perspective, and her mother's cousin by marriage, Rose's perspective. Um, Isabel, I believe is in, let me just say that, uh, the 1960s. And then we're getting her mother slash auntie almost, um, in the 1930s, mostly based between, uh, Spain, uh, Barcelona and Cuba in Havana. Um, but there's also a little bit of Palm Beach, Florida thrown in there as well. Um, basically, uh, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this one, am I? Uh, different conflicts of leaving Cuba and going to Spain and hopefully um, getting an escape there because things that were happening in Cuba, they wanted to escape. And now there are things that are happening in Spain that they want to escape. And Isabel goes to find her sister Beatrice, um, who is always involved in some sort of political spy-like behavior. And so she's going there to hopefully find her sister who's been out of miscommunication. And then we're also getting the time period of why um, Isabel's mother, Alicia, had left Cuba uh, and gone to Barcelona. So that was a really, really backwards way of trying to explain that one. And I, I, I'm sure it's confusing. I will link uh, in the comments below the actual like 
Goodreads description of the book, but I'm enjoying it so far. Um, these have been some of my best or favorite historical fictions to read. Um, I can't wait to finish this one. I will put my star predictions up here, um, or not my star predictions, my star rating once I finish it this afternoon. Um, but overall, uh, 10 books total, five books in this last part of June is a really great month for me. I'm really happy with my reading thus far this year. I had a goal set for 52. I kind of just always make that my goal every year, a book a week. Um, and right now I believe I'm on book 63. So I am really happy with that number. I'm sure I should probably up my goal to be 100, but it doesn't matter. I don't really care how many books I read. I just like to keep reading and hopefully find even more uh, five-star books to keep reading. So let me know how your month of June went below. What are you reading? What are things that I should pick up? Um, I look forward to chatting with you there. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.